This video will demonstrate how to use the seismic load feature of the load helper by way of an example project. Let's get started. In this example, we will determine the seismic loads on a four-story structure located in Northridge, California. The structure has a risk category of 2 and will use a steel special moment frame seismic force resisting system. The story height and weights are shown in the elevation view, and we will assume the site class is C. To determine the seismic forces in the load helper, we can input all of the information in the tabs on the left, and the results are displayed in the various tabs on the right. In the site information, let's set the risk category and specify the site class for this project. Instead of manually entering the spectral response parameters SS and S1, and the value for the long period transition, we will let the program generate these values automatically by inputting the latitude and longitude of our project site. Note, in the program there is an option to calculate the seismic design category from the STS value only, which is allowed if certain criteria are met in the specification. Also, there are options to override the short and long period site coefficients. For our case, we will leave these boxes unchecked. In the Seismic Force System section, we can specify if the structure has an irregularity, which we will assume it does not for this case. Next, let's define the response coefficient R and the deflection amplification CD and set the overstrength and redundancy factors for each direction. In the Building Information section, let's specify the number of stories for the structure and define the height and the weight for each story. The total building height and the seismic weight are calculated automatically. Finally, in the building period section, we can select from the three different methods to calculate the fundamental period of the structure, or we can opt to enter the value manually. For this case, let's use equation 12.8-7 and input the appropriate CT and X values for steel moment resisting frames. Having completed the inputs, we can go over to the results section to see the various calculations. The design category section shows the calculated values for the maximum considered earthquake, the design spectral response, and the seismic design category. The response coefficient section shows the calculated values for the spectral response accelerations and if a reduced SDS value was used when calculating the seismic response coefficient, CX, as allowed by the specification. Also, the calculated value of the seismic response coefficient, CS, and its limits along with the corresponding code equations are displayed along with the value used for design. In this case, we see that the CS value used for design is governed by the upper limit for the seismic response coefficient. Next, we can view the seismic base shear for the structure. Then switching to the distribution of forces section, we can view the vertical distribution of the seismic force with the load on each level of the structure. Next, we can see the results of the building period calculation based on the calculation mode that we chose. Finally, we can switch to the response spectrum section to see a graph of the response spectrum. After completing the seismic calculations for the structure, we can switch the Report tab and select the info to include in the report to document our work. In just a few minutes, we have used the load helper to determine the seismic loads on a structure according to the ASCE standard. We hope you find this program useful in determining the seismic loads for your various structures. Thanks for watching and have a great day.